the laryngeal mask airway, or LMA, provides a means to deliver surfactant to infants that do not have an endotracheal tube. Benefits of surfactant delivered through an LMA include Infants with respiratory distress syndrome, also known as RDS, are able to benefit from early surfactant administration. The avoidance of negative physiologic effects of intubation and mechanical ventilation. The ease and short duration of the procedure. And the ability to maintain functional residual capacity, or FRC, during the procedure. This video will provide step-by-step -step instructions on how to administer surfactant through an LMA. The goal of this video is to familiarize clinicians with the equipment and procedure so they feel comfortable performing the procedure in the clinical setting. Equipment needed for the procedure includes an LMA. Shown here are the eye gel and LMA unique. However, there are several other LMAs available. This video does not endorse any certain product. A Y piece adapter, a CO2 detector, a Christmas tree adapter, an 8 French feeding tube pre cut to 14 centimeters in length. Note the appropriate length of the feeding tube may vary depending on the type of LMA used. 14 centimeters is the correct length if a size 1 LMA unique or size 1 eye gel are used. If using a different LMA, determine the correct length by attaching the Y piece adapter to the LMA and advancing the feeding tube through the appropriate limb of the Y piece until the tip of the feeding tube is at the distal end of the LMA, approximately 5 millimeters above the cuff. In preparation for the procedure, confirm that you have at the bedside a bag mask ventilation device, a CO2 detector, suction, and intubation supplies. Confirm that the baby has an OG or NG and a functioning IV. Prior to starting, pre-cut an 8 French feeding tube to 14 centimeters in length. Note, if you are using an LMA other than the LMA Unique or eye gel, refer to the former slide on equipment preparation to determine the correct length to pre-cut the feeding tube. It is also recommended to calculate the dose of a rapid onset paralytic in the unlikely event that the infant were to experience laryngospasm. For example, rocuronium would be administered at a dose of 0.6 milligrams per kilogram IV via rapid push if laryngospasm were to occur. Once the preparatory items have been completed, the first step in the procedure is to administer a 24% sucrose solution, such as Sweet Ease, at a dose of 0.2 to 0.5 milliliters to the tip of the tongue. Next is to administer atropine at a dose of 0.02 milligrams per kilogram IV over one minute. Position the infant supine with the head midline in the sniffing position. Aspirate the stomach contents and then remove the NG or OG. The nasal CPAP can remain in place during the procedure. The next step in the procedure is to insert the LMA. First, prepare the LMA by attaching the Y piece adapter to the LMA and the CO2 detector to the round, smooth limb of the Y piece. If the LMA you are using has a cuff, slightly inflate the cuff just enough so that the cuff is not completely collapsed. This will help prevent the cuff from folding over on itself during the insertion process. Next, open the infant's mouth and grasp the tongue with your left thumb. Of note, in an effort to maintain normal vital signs, we recommend that each placement attempt be limited to 30 seconds. Insert the LMA with your right hand, using your index finger to guide the LMA along the hard palate. When unable to advance further with the index finger, grasp the LMA with your right thumb and index finger and continue to advance until CO2 is detected and you are unable to advance further. Next, hold the LMA in place and attach the bag to the CO2 detector. If the LMA you are using has a cuff, inflate the cuff with air to the manufacturer's recommendations. This will usually be 3 cc's or less. This slide illustrates placement of the LMA. Notice the slight backup of the LMA when the cuff is inflated. Once the LMA is in place, bag ventilate with the FiO2 set at 40%. Look for color change. If the CO2 detector turns yellow, this indicates that carbon dioxide is present and the LMA is in good position. If no color change is detected, the first step is to readjust the LMA. Most commonly, the LMA is stuck against the tongue and not deep enough. 
This can be corrected by downward advancement of the LMA. If this does not result in color change, it is then recommended to slightly retract the LMA. Note, if the LMA has a cuff and there is no improvement with repositioning, slightly deflate the cuff and readjust. If the oxygen saturation is less than 95%, increase the Phi-O2. If bradycardia occurs, the LMA is likely too deep. Slowly retract the LMA until heart rate increases while still maintaining CO2 detection. The first video demonstrates insertion using a cuffed LMA. Your finger now. Oh, okay. That's going to be very difficult to fit everything in there, so just get it as close as you can, and then advance with the index finger, kind of baby setting fine, heart rate's good. Apply that, and then apply the bag mask. We want to inflate the cuff, right? Inflate the cuff first, yeah, with three cc's of air. The second video demonstrates insertion using an LMA without a cuff. Notice the Y piece and CO2 detector are attached to the LMA prior to insertion. Insert the eight French feeding tube which has been pre-cut to the appropriate length into the Y adapter. This should be advanced in the limb of the Y adapter that is opposite the limb with the CO2 detector and bag. Administer surfactant through the feeding tube in two milliliter aliquots. The infant will remain supine throughout the procedure and will not be rolled to the right or left side. After each aliquot, bag ventilate until surfactant has cleared from the LMA, oxygen saturations are greater than 95%, and heart rate is greater than 100 beats per minute. It usually takes four to five manual breaths to clear the surfactant from the LMA. After the last aliquot, bag ventilate for approximately 30 seconds. All right, go ahead now. Looks like our okay. heart rate's great. 130, is that too many? We have a two ml aliquot. Okay. All right, and that's our 100, heart rate's great. You can beg. Keep begging all the way through. Alright, that's two MLs. She's still doing good. 130 and 100. Okay, again. Saturations are 100, heart rate's fine. After surfactant has been administered, the next step in the procedure is to remove the LMA. First, remove the LMA from the mouth. If the LMA has a cuff, the cuff needs to be deflated prior to removal. Next, place an OG or NG and suction the stomach. Note the amount of surfactant in the stomach, if any. This will give a rough estimate of how much surfactant has leaked around the cuff and gone down the esophagus and stomach rather than into the trachea. Okay, I'll pull it out. Can All right, what do you think, baby? And then the CPAP is back on. And... This instructional video is intended to serve as a general guideline for the procedure and can easily be adapted to individual institutions and situations. The procedure can be performed with different forms of equipment. In addition to the Y adapter previously shown, T adapters are also available. With the T adapter, 
the surfactant syringe is directly attached to the adapter. This eliminates four additional items needed when using Y adapter. In addition to colorimeter CO2 detectors, capnography is also available. Use of capnography dramatically improves fine tuning of device placement as it provides instantaneous feedback while the provider subtly advances and retracts the LMA to optimize mask placement over the tracheal opening. It is recommended to use capnography for the procedure if it is available in your clinical setting. This procedure can also be accomplished with minimal equipment. The video demonstrates the procedure using only an LMA and bag ventilation. While the procedure is often fast, easy, and well tolerated, complications may occur. Bradycardia is uncommon if atropine is used for premedication. As mentioned previously, if bradycardia were to occur, especially in the absence of desaturation, it is likely secondary to vagal nerve stimulation and can be relieved with slight retraction of the LMA. Desaturation may occur during LMA placement or during surfactant administration. If significant desaturation were to occur, it is recommended to stop the procedure, remove the LMA, and bag mask ventilate until the infant has recovered. Laryngospasm is a theoretic complication of the procedure, given that medication is administered above the vocal cords. While this has not been reported in animal or human studies or in clinical experience, it is recommended that a rapid onset muscle relaxant and intubation supplies be readily available. If at any time the infant is unstable with an oxygen saturation less than 75% or heart rate less than 100 beats per minute and the infant is unable to recover with bag mask ventilation, it is then recommended to intubate with an endotracheal tube. As mentioned previously, in the unlikely event that a laryngospasm were to occur, a rapid onset paralytic should be administered. While LMAs are becoming more common in the NICU setting, many providers are not familiar with their use and may feel apprehensive or intimidated by the procedure. However, in a recent study where providers were initially unfamiliar with the LMA, successful placement was achieved in the majority of infants in a single attempt and completed within 35 seconds. Providers involved in the study were trained on a patient simulator and stated they felt comfortable with the technique after only their second experience. In addition to the instructional video, further training can be gained through practicing the procedure on a patient simulator. In summary, the LMA is a fast and effective method for delivering surfactant to infants who do not have an endotracheal tube. Infants are able to benefit from surfactant administration while avoiding the negative effects of intubation and mechanical ventilation. The procedure is well tolerated by infants with minimal bradycardia if atropine is used as premedication. Familiarity with the procedure can be gained through this step-by-step -step instruction video and through practice on a patient simulator. Additional resources include the following randomized controlled trials investigating the use of the LMA for surfactant administration in neonates. The flowchart, which can be printed and used at the bedside during the procedure, the Facebook group called Salsa, created specifically for this procedure, and contact information for Dr. Kerry Roberts 